Due to COVID-19, the U.S. general population is experiencing to some degree what forcibly displaced people already face, the inability to work, financial instability, lack of freedom of movement, and the psychological stress of uncertainty. While I don't equate this with the experience of forced displacement, I also don't diminish what U.S. citizens are facing with the pandemic but hopefully it breaks down some barriers and increases empathy for everyone. There is a camp for asylum seekers across the border from Brownsville, Texas. It's called Matamoros. An estimated 2,500 asylum seekers are living there today. 700 are children and 100 are pregnant women. But they aren't numbers. They are real people with names. Like Juana, who is 20 years old and has been in the camp for seven months with her infant son who learned to walk while in the camp. She applied for asylum and at her asylum hearing was told that she has no chance at asylum. She is at a loss for what to do, believing that her life is at risk if she returns to her home country. As I reflect on the current COVID-19 health challenge, I can't help but think of Juana in Matamoros as well as the 70.8 million forcibly displaced people around the world today. Like many refugees and camps around the world, asylum seekers in Matamoros don't have a home. They don't have food. They don't have enough access to running water and soap. The crowded conditions of the camp make it impossible to quarantine or social distance. Asylum hearings have been postponed. The closed border is keeping out many volunteers whose presence in the camp not only provided practical assistance, but also gave people hope that they were not forgotten. People who have been forcibly displaced experience multiple layers of crisis and trauma. First, they are forced to flee for their lives because of persecution, torture, violence, death of loved ones, and other traumas. Next is the crisis of seeking safety and protection along with the deprivation of basic needs like shelter, food, water. They don't know who they can trust. There is danger and isolation and uncertainty. And now, suddenly, this new pandemic crisis has presented itself to this already traumatized and vulnerable population, a population that has no backup, no emergency fund, nor resources at hand for this crisis. I also think of asylum seekers and resettled refugees within our U.S. borders who are working hard to recover from forced displacement and to rebuild their lives. They are in our cities, rural towns, and neighborhoods. Some are in detention centers, even though they haven't committed a crime. Many asylum seekers are barred from employment and are ineligible for any government assistance. Lack of stable shelter, food, and medical care make them especially vulnerable. Without stable shelter, from where can they practice social distancing? Asylum seekers in crowded detention centers can't practice social distancing, putting them at risk of exposure to the coronavirus. Visits from family, faith leaders, and volunteers have been postponed. Access to lawyers is limited, even though hearings continue and have not been postponed. Resettled refugees are working diligently to rebuild their lives in a new place through employment, education, and contributing to their new community. The coronavirus has disrupted this. Many who are in the entry-level workforce have lost their jobs and don't have health insurance. Others are part of the essential worker sector in nursing homes, grocery stores, meatpacking plants, or transportation and they are daily risking exposure of themselves and their families to the coronavirus. Wherever in the world refugees and asylum seekers are, the disruption and uncertainty of the coronavirus have triggered trauma flashbacks for many, making it more difficult to navigate this new threat to their health and well-being. But there is good news. The first is that God is engaged with forcibly displaced people. There is another camp of nearly 200,000 refugees in Kenya, and it's called Kakuma. There, there are severe, there is a shortage of soap and water is rationed. People can't practice coronavirus hand washing even if they want to. They live in close quarters where malaria, cholera, malnourishment, and diabetes are daily health challenges. 
what can they do to prevent the spread of coronavirus? The leaders of refugee churches in the camp had an idea. What if the 162 churches could become soap distribution centers? 50 liter water tanks and five liters of liquid soap for each tank would be needed. Within hours, a donor provided the funds to set up 162 distribution sites plus a four month supply of soap. The churches are distributing soap and water to their communities all over the camp, to all nationalities, ethnicities, and faiths. Refugees had a solution. God answered the prayer and supplied the need. The second good news is that refugees can teach us much about navigating a crisis like the coronavirus. I am encouraged by the resilience and faith of refugee friends I have the privilege of knowing. They demonstrate a drive to keep going in the midst of chaos and risk. Uncertainty is not foreign to them. Their perseverance in the face of extreme hardship and suffering has brought them to a place of deep faith, hope for the future, and care for others. Bowani and his family of eight experienced persecution, oppression, and 16 years in a refugee camp before being resettled in the United States in 2008. 2008, during a recession which made it nearly impossible for him to find long-term <clears throat> stable employment. But the family kept persevering. Today, he is a homeowner, his family is thriving, and he is a COVID-19 essential worker in the janitorial field. He is so pleased to contribute to COVID-19 mitigation efforts through his janitorial work. Yassine, a Syrian refugee in Knoxville, Tennessee, says this, and I quote, Refugees like me can offer a unique perspective during this time, especially given the adversity we have faced. We have learned to be thankful for what we have instead of dwelling on what we don't have. We have learned the importance of resilience and perseverance, and we have learned that helping families and neighbors through a difficult time reaps tremendous mental and emotional rewards. I assure you, there is a pathway through the darkness, he says. Together, we can defeat this virus and rejoice on the other side. Given the resources and energy required of us in caring for our own families and communities in the face of the coronavirus, is it reasonable to think that we can also care for those who have been forcibly displaced? Do we have to choose one or the other? I believe by God's grace, we can do both. Several years ago, I visited Zaleka refugee camp in Malawi. Initially, I was overwhelmed by the camp's harsh, desolate landscape. The conditions are devastating. But the longer I was there and the more time I spent with our refugee friends, the more beauty I saw. Imagine you're a refugee. Yet God has placed on your heart the plight of orphans outside of your camp. How can you, a refugee living on UN rations, help orphans? Members of Zaleka refugee camp churches tithe the portion of their UN rice rations in order to provide food and education for Malawian orphans. Their example challenges me, and I think all of us, that no matter how much or how, or how little we have in resources or what personal crisis we are facing, if we commit what we have to God, he will multiply it and use it to change lives and bring about what seems impossible. I keep a jar of rice on my desk as a reminder of this. So how can we or how should we respond to the refugee crisis and the vulnerability of all of us facing the coronavirus? The first action that comes to mind is prayer. <clears throat> Proactive, informed, specific, and consistent prayer. I truly believe that prayer is the most effective action available to all of us. Reading the Bible, we witness over and over how God sees, hears, and cares about every individual he created. I suggest that we first identify a place where forcibly displaced people are and commit to praying there. Perhaps it's a refugee camp in Kenya, Malawi, Greece, Mexico, Uganda, Bangladesh, or Colombia. Perhaps it's reseller refugees working at a meatpacking plant in the United States, or asylum seekers whose asylum cases have been delayed, or asylum seekers who are in detention centers. 
find information about this place. You can use Google or maybe a personal contact has some information. Then pray specifically for the people in that place. Pray for those who are sick and to have lost loved ones, those who have lost work or income. Pray for a provision of medical personnel and supplies and humanitarian workers access to the place. Pray for the national and local leaders for wisdom and good decision-making. Pray that this pandemic season would pass quickly for miraculous intervention and effective treatments. Pray that individuals would call out to God and that they experience the reality that he sees, hears, and cares for them. Set aside a regular time for this prayer, perhaps daily or weekly, and consider praying together with someone, perhaps someone in your household or by telephone or online with someone else outside of your household. A second action is to be a witness and speak up. Very often when we see suffering <clears throat> that we can't change, we feel uncomfortable and are tempted to look away. Instead of looking away, let's pray and speak up. We can let our church family, coworkers, or schools know what we've seen or heard. The easiest way is probably <clears throat> through social media, but we can also call a friend or pastor and share what we've seen and ask them to pray. We can pass on updates to the situation as we receive them. God may be inviting some of us to reach out in practical ways. Though all of us are navigating the coronavirus challenge, our personal circumstances can vary widely in regard to personal increased risks, financial and job stability, caring for children, etc. Are your basic needs being met? If not, Perhaps that is where your focus needs to be for the time being. Please reach out to your church, family, or friends to get the help that you need. If your circumstances are stable, I invite you to explore how you can contribute to improving the stability of someone else's circumstances as they relate to COVID-19. Look with the eyes of Christ and reach out to find those who need your help. Reach out to local community organizations for opportunities to demonstrate care for people, perhaps with food or rental assistance. Reach out to local family assistance organizations providing funds for those who don't qualify for the CARES Act benefits. Reach out to pastors of refugee and immigrant churches asking how you or your church can best support and partner with them. Reach out to your local refugee and immigrant assistance organizations like World Relief or Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service to find out if there are ways to volunteer and extend friendship to refugees and immigrants in your community. Perhaps you're able to use your CARES Act stimulus benefits or other financial resources to help the humanitarian and nonprofit world's efforts to save lives in forced displacement camps. International Association for Refugees is working with local partners in Kenya, Malawi, and Greece to provide soap and medicine, as well as food for newly arriving quarantined refugees. In Matamoros, Global Response Management is setting up a field hospital, and Team Brownsville is coordinating meals for camp residents. Through Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services, you can write to a migrant detainee and let them know they are not forgotten. Humanitarian organizations like the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, International Rescue Committee, and the World Food Program are responding to the COVID-19 challenge by providing access to water, sanitation, basic health care, and food to refugees around the world. If anyone can look beyond ourselves to care for the vulnerable during this pandemic, the church can. Thank you for your time and for listening. Thank you, Border Perspective, for the privilege of sharing today. May God grant us all security, peace, wisdom, and good health as we navigate these uncertain and unsettling times.